Asia has seen your pres presence in the last few months. Uh, so online, of course, uh, I keep on seeing you surface in Indonesia and Korea, right? Mm -hmm. And how has that been uh, traveling around Asia? Are there other countries that you visited that I, I missed? Yeah, so I did um, my first tour in Southeast Asia in this past September. Mm -hmm. I went to um, Indonesia, the Philippines, South Korea, as you mentioned. Um, I also did Singapore, Malaysia, um, Tokyo. I hope I'm not missing any. Um, and Thailand. And Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, and it was an amazing experience. And that was my first time in all of those countries was going there to perform, which was insane. Did you did you grow a, uh, a a palette for the Asian food? And if so, you know which part was your favorite? Um, I think so. I like I definitely eat a lot of Asian food here in the U.S. Yeah. Um, but in each country, it's definitely depending on where you go. Like Thai food is very different in Thailand than it is in America. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I I'm a huge food guy, so I like that was one of my favorite things besides actually playing concerts was like going and trying out the food in every city in every country that that was like the highlight of my trip for sure all right well so out of curiosity if you uh were stuck on a de deserted island the start of you know every uh i guess bar topic uh what is one food you would always eat and what is one album you always listen to anything aside from your own music oh wow one food i would always eat Oh man, okay. I would choose like soup dumplings. I forgot like what they're actually called, but are you familiar with soup dumplings? Wontons? Are you talking about wontons? Yeah, yeah, wontons. <laughs> but um, yeah, wontons could work. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and one album I would listen to might be Blondes by Frank Ocean. No way. Mm -hmm. You are a Frank Ocean's fan. Yeah, totally. Because recently, as I hear about a lot of your musical inspirations or people you're listening to, I hear uh, Laney, I hear Mac Miller, uh, I hear Blink-182, but I never heard Frank Ocean. Yeah. Uh, um, Frank Ocean, I mean, that album, Blonde, specifically, does influence a lot of my stuff, I think, mm. just because it's such a different project and it's so, like, soft and beautiful, and I think... Like that, I mean, that album sort of helped me not be afraid to like get weird and experimental with beautiful sounding stuff. Okay. Well, yeah. here here in Asia, we hear the song come through a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the one that is right. It rose up on the charts all over. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about what led to this single, because you so far have released nine EPs. Uh, one of them is with Chelsea Cutler. That's as of late. Right. Uh, the first one is one that I don't think a lot of people can find now. It's called West, and that was in the summer mm -hmm. of 2015. So um, yeah. from that first album on, at what point were you really comfortable with the music that you were making or was it, you know, pretty good at, at the start? Um, I mean, it was definitely rough in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't really find Wes, um, <laughs> among other reasons. But yeah, so it was West, and then it was Beach Island. Mm. And then this project Breathe that was originally me writing and releasing a song every week yeah. and i remember this was during my second year of university um i like released a new song every week and then at the end packaged it together as as an album and put it out on soundcloud and spotify and that was like the first time that i knew i was like writing really competitive songs because every week i would put out a song it would do better and better yeah. on soundcloud and it would get like reposted this was like the first time people were really picking up my music before i was just releasing music and my friends were listening and it would get like a little bit of circulation yeah but i think me deciding to do a song a week is what really started to catapult it yeah and then right after my project breathe or not right after i guess it was a year after i put out idol and that was the first project that i was like wow every song on here is really special and that's when I really felt like I was starting to find myself as an artist. And right after I put that out, Talk is Overrated started to do really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, and then ever since then, I feel like every project, every EP I've released has really felt like me. 
So okay, ever since Breathe, Lynn, let's say you consistently released a couple of album or a couple of EPs every year. Now, are these EPs basically snapshots of your life uh, in in that moment in a, in that interval of your life? One hundred percent. Yeah, I would typically write an EP over the course of like three to six months. Yeah. And when I write music, I'm like, it's I'm not sitting down like, oh, I'm gonna write a song about this topic. It's more like. This is what I'm feeling, and I'm going to try to express it, and then a song comes out of that. And so, when I like, if I have a collection of three, four, or five, six songs, those are going to be all of like my strongest emotions and and my most memorable moments from my life during that three to six month period. So it very much is a snapshot. Okay. Of my life. Okay. So the L, uh, the EP Summer was released in September of 2018. Um, mm-hmm. in the three to six months leading up to that release, what were you going through? Because I want to know what sort of headspace you were in when Come Through came about. Yeah, this one was really specific. So I had just graduated from university like four months earlier. Yeah. So the project came out in September. I graduated from college in May. And my life was looking like I am finally about to live my dream mm-hmm. and not be in school anymore and be an artist and be able to tour and write music and all this stuff. So I graduated from school and I thought I was going to move into the city and start living my life that way. But in reality, I like, I, it takes time to find an apartment. So I, (laughs) I was living with my parents in New Jersey. Um, and it took me longer than expected to really be able to move into the city because I had to, like my roommates had to be available and all sorts of stuff. So I, I spent like two months at home in New Jersey during the summer. And I had all these expectations that it was going to be like the best summer of my life, like right after college. And in reality, I was sort of like stuck in New Jersey and nobody was really around. And, and all I really had to do was write music. So I was working on this EP every day. And so the project came from a place of like disappointment almost it was like beautiful wet. Like I love the summer, yeah. but it sort of, it really sucked like being inside and my sleep schedule was getting all out of whack, just like being inside all day working and then not really getting time to see friends. And so when I wrote come through, it was sort of, that was the last song I think I wrote for the, for the EP. Oh. And I like, I, what I was feeling pretty lonely and I was just, I think, disappointed with like what my life looked like in that moment. I knew that things were going to be better in the future, but I was just like, why do I feel like I'm in limbo? I just like want to hang out with someone. None of my friends are around, you know? <laughs> so yeah. that's really like where the song came from. Like, not like a dark place, but it wasn't, it doesn't feel like a place that the song feels like. Um, you can definitely see it in the lyrics, though. Yeah, definitely. And it's a weird thing to feel, isn't it? To uh, to come home, yet home is different, and it's not what you expected. It looks the same, it just feels different. Uh, of course, the weather didn't add to it. So I guess come through is a culmination of all those emotions, and since you wrote it last, it was the most emotional one, and people felt that. Um, totally. Soon after that, of course, we heard more uh, from Jeremy Zucker and we heard more of your music. You got a chance to, to travel with the world. Uh, now you're still in New Jersey, New York. Like You still travel between these two places, right? Yes. Yeah, so I live in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, my parents live in New Jersey. So, I mean, I, I haven't been there in a while because of this pandemic situation. Yeah, I want to talk about that. How's everything going? It's, you know, they're calling New York the epicenter now. There's a lot of cases and a lot of deaths. It's pretty scary. Yeah. Um, but, you know, all my friends and all the people that know here, everyone is quarantining and staying inside and working from home. Um, I'm lucky, like, my recording studio is near my apartment, um, so I can walk there and I work alone, so I don't have to be in contact with anyone, so I can sort of still do everything that I was doing before except for going on tour. Um, And, you know, my roommate is working from home as well. Luckily, he still has his job. Um, But, you know, it's really tough for a lot of people. A lot of people, a bunch of my friends have lost their jobs and they either, like, moved back home with their parents so they had to stop paying rent or to just get out of the city because, like, 
you have a, a good chance of getting it if you live in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, and like you're going around and it's scary going to the grocery store. It's a weird time for sure. So we're sort of just like trying to stay positive and trying to wait it out. Yo, so you went to school for biology and you were thinking about pre-med or you were in pre-med, right? Mm -hmm. um, so now you are making music and seeing what's happening around you. Does that kind of, you know, do you ever feel like, oh, maybe I do want to go back into the health sector and contribute? Um, Has that crossed your mind? I like I, I think about it, but I don't I don't really seriously entertain the idea. Um, I think because if if I were to go and like try to do medicine, it would be a lot of school. Yeah. To to get there, because I didn't go to med school, so it would be like four years of med school and then the residency and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I don't think I have to have a career in in health or science to like be able to like still enjoy what I got from it. Cause I'd like, I just, I like understanding how the world works and how the body works. And there's all sorts of resources. I can like still learn that without actually making that my career. Mm, that's true. Um, yeah. And also like, I love this too much. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, you're very good at it. And what, what baffles me is that a lot of musicians, you know, in the last couple of weeks are pondering whether or not they should release their new album and for us we're wondering why not you know this is when people really need yeah. music to dance to so mm -hmm. it's good that you keep on releasing stuff that and people like um and so you were talking about tours because uh the end of this month you were supposed to launch your u.s and european tour um so that's been put mm -hmm. on hold of course um so you're at home now um what's your home routine like what do you do when you wake up in the morning what uh i guess you go to the studio right away um yeah so my roommate works from home so we sort of like try to keep our schedules sort of yeah aligned so we don't get too bored <laughs> you know but um yeah so i like wake up i try to do something physical work out make breakfast um i'll probably hang in the apartment for like an hour or two and then i'll go to my studio around noon and i will work there for like six hours and then walk back um like around sunset before it gets dark um, and come back, cook dinner, hang out, watch a movie, play video games, really normal stuff. Ah, you're a video game guy. Please tell me which game you're working on right now. I've, I've been playing, I'm not a huge video game guy. I'm, I've been playing Call of Duty. Nice. Warzone. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, but I like, I'm not a big, I'm a big social video game guy. Like I really like yeah. to play games with friends. I don't really like to play alone. Um, but yeah, that's my schedule these days just because the virus has made the like the world so weird. Yeah. Um normally like I would stay to the stay at the studio until like later at night, but I don't want to be like walking across Brooklyn in the middle of, like when it's dark, you know. Well, um, I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen to the, the morning routine of all of our listeners and myself on come, and, come Friday. I'm going to wake up, get that first cup of coffee, and then we're going to listen to your new album, Love Is Not Dying, which is going to be your first LP. Are you excited about this? 15 songs? It's like the only thing keeping me going right now. <laughs> Not the only thing. It's like the biggest thing keeping me going right now. I'm so excited for my album to come out. Okay, well, we I've been following your uh, Instagram and your Twitter. Um, you have some really cute merch that comes along with uh, the release of each single. <laughs> um, so we're looking forward to the album and the music. Uh, we're going to play one song for our, our listeners. It doesn't have to be one of your four s promote singles that you have out right now. Uh, but, the, but, but this interview is likely to air on Friday. So when they hear this, which song would you want them to listen to and really pay attention to? Whoa. That's a really good question. So you guys are going to play one song and you're asking me to choose which one? No, we're going to play more. It's just we're going to play one that they're really going to get a chance to get your side of the story. Hmm. Okay, wait. Let me like look at the track list <laughs> really quick. All right. You do that. Whoa. Um, I, think, I think somebody loves you. I think okay. they'll like that the most. Okay, cool. And that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Sam, and why this one? Um, I mean, just in terms of like, the, it's such, it's such a feel good song and it's such a specific moment. Like I, I, I think my most popular, some of my most popular songs are like my most feel good songs. Yeah. 
And it's funny because that's only like my whole cat out of my whole catalog, like very few of them are feel good songs, you know? <laughs> uh, so like when I do write a feel good song, it's really special. Um, and this is one, yeah, it, like it's a feel good song, but like in a, in an extremely special way and in, in a really different way. So I think I'm just excited for people to like, it's a very like, it can be like dancey. It's really feelsy. Um, a lot of the music on a lot of the music on the album, the new songs are really sad um, and a bit more introspective. Mm-hmm. So I think somebody loves you is a good one that like feels like it brings people together in that way. Also, when I was on tour in Asia, I played this song. Oh, you um, did. It was unreleased, yeah, okay. and that was a lot of fun. All right, well, it's a perfect selection for uh, Feel Good Friday. So uh, today we have Jeremy Zucker here with us. Brand new EP, Love Is Not Dying, coming out today, everybody. Uh, go catch it on all the platforms, Spotify, KKBox, and iTunes and whatnot. Uh, Jeremy, before you go, just say a quick goodbye to all of our listeners on ICRT. Please. Thanks uh, for all the support so far, guys. And I really hope you enjoy my album. And I hope to get over there real soon. Thank you. Thank you.